Welcome to the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. Get ready to be inspired, uplifted, and connected to the miraculous energy of unconditional love that I call Mother Mary. If you're a highly sensitive, highly creative entrepreneur or light worker, and you want to magnify your impact and your intuition, you are in the right place. I'm your host, Reverend Francis Faden, interfaith minister, intuitive coach, and author of Meditation is Friendship with God. I can't wait to share miraculous stories, books, meditations, messages, and interviews with other miraculous light workers just like you. Are you ready to magnify your miracles? What are we waiting for? Let's get started. Hello, my miraculous friend, and welcome to another episode of the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. This is Reverend Francis Faden. I am so grateful to get to spend this time with you, and I have a beautiful, beautiful book to share with you today. We're going to have some really soul-stirring and soul-warming inspiration that I'm excited to share with you. But before we do that, let's take a few deep breaths together. Just get ourselves grounded like we always do. Really prepare our mind and our soul and our hearts to receive this beautiful inspiration that comes to us today in the form of a book. And as always, if you're driving, please keep your eyes on the road, but you can still bring your awareness to your breath. You know, this is such an important process to prepare ourselves so that we can receive more fully. And as we bring our hearts and our minds and our body all into this moment, knowing that we will be nourished deeply, let's take one more deep breath together in gratitude and we can begin. All right, my friend. Well, this book that I'm sharing with you today is a book that I hope that you will treasure and that it will feed you for a lifetime. It's that kind of book. It's a beautiful book called Anamkara, The Book of Celtic Wisdom by John O'Donohue. And whether you're a follower of Celtic spirituality or not, there's such deep, powerful wisdom in this book. Part of it is philosophy. Part of it is poetry. Part of it is just beautiful wisdom passed down and written so, so well. I'll be honest with you, this is a book that I I take in bites. It's not something that I've been sitting down and just, you know, devouring the whole book because it is so rich with wisdom that I want to be able to digest it spiritually. I want to be able to assimilate it and really absorb the beautiful wisdom and the teaching here. Now, there are many, many things in this book. They, it covers a lot of different topics, but I'm going to start with the word Anamkara. So if you do have this book, I'm on page 13. And what does the Anamkara even mean? So page 13, the Anamkara. In the Celtic tradition, there is a beautiful understanding of love and friendship. One of the fascinating ideas here is the idea of soul love. The old Gaelic term for this is Anamkara. Anam is the Gaelic word for soul, and kara is the word for friend. So I just want to stop right there and say, I have noticed in my studies, you know, I'm an interfaith minister, and I've studied a lot of different paths and a lot of different scripture, and I've done a lot of study on Hinduism and the path of yoga. And I find it interesting that this word anam, there is seems to be some connection between the Celtic people and the uh, people of India. I'm not sure what it is or how it worked, but this word anam uh, in Gaelic is very similar to the atman, atman, which is the word for um, the soul of the divine, the divine that is within you. So anyway, let me continue. Uh, Anam is the Gaelic word for soul and kara is the word for friend. So anam kara is the Celtic word, is the soul friend. In the early Celtic church, a person who acted as a teacher, companion, or spiritual guide was called an Anamkara. It is originally referred to someone 
to whom you confessed, revealing the hidden intimacies of your life. With the Anamkara, you could share your innermost self, your mind, and your heart. This friendship was an act of recognition and belonging. When you had an Anamkara, your friendship cut across all convention, morality, and category. You were joined in an ancient and eternal way with the friend of your soul. I love that word, the friend of your soul. The Celtic understanding did not set limitations of space or time on the soul. There is no cage for the soul. The soul is a divine light that flows into you and into your other. This art of belonging awakened and fostered a deep and special companionship. In his book, Conferences, John Cassian says, this bond between friends is dissoluble. And I quote, this, I say, is what is broken by no chances, what no interval of time or space can sever or destroy, and what even death itself cannot part, end of quote. In everyone's life, there is a great need for an anamkara, a soul friend. In this love, you are understood as you are without mask or pretension. The superficial and functional lies and half-truths of social acquaintance fall away, and you can be as you really are. Love allows understanding to dawn, and understanding is precious. Where you are understood, you are at home. Understanding nourishes belonging. When you really feel understood, you feel free to release yourself into the trust and shelter of the other person's souls. This recognition is described in a beautiful line from Pablo Neruda. Quote, you are like nobody since I love you. End of quote. This art of love discloses the special and sacred identity of the other person. Love is the only light that can truly read the secret signature of the other person's individuality and soul. Love alone is literate in the world of origin. It can decipher identity and destiny. It is precisely in awakening and exploring this rich and opaque inner landscape that the Anamkara experience illuminates the mystery and kindness of the divine. The Anamkara is God's gift. Friendship is the nature of God. Now I have to stop right there. (laughs) When I read that, that really, really struck me because, you know, I wrote a book called Meditation is Friendship with God. And that line is a line, Meditation is Friendship with God. I got that from a letter that Paramahansa Yogananda had written to one of his disciples. I was reading a book of his letters to one of his disciples, and that line jumped out at me. Meditation, which is basically sitting and listening and being with the divine in whatever way works for you. It's an act of friendship. So this really jumped out at me and is very, um, very much an affirmation, a confirmation Friendship is the nature of God. I just love that. And I'm going to uh, leave you there. That's on page 15. And then, as I said, this beautiful book has, um, you know, poetry in it. And so I'm going to read to you a poem from page 131. And now he's talking about in Celtic spirituality the reverence for the new day. And this is the top of page 131. For the Celtic person, the new day was lived amidst nature. It is easy to have a creative sense of the day when you live in the presence of the great divinity called nature. For the Celtic people, nature was not matter. Rather, it was a luminous and numinous presence that had depth, possibility, and beauty. There is also a beautiful invocation of the day in an ancient poem called The Deer's Cry. Let me read it to you. I arise today through God's strength to direct me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak to me, God's hand to guard me. God's way to lie before me, 
and God's shield to protect me, God's hosts to save me from snares of devils, from temptation of vices, from everyone who shall wish me ill, afar and anear, alone and in a multitude. And then on page 132, it says, this poem articulates the Celtic recognition of the omnipresence of God. The very act of awakening is recognized as a gift. Now take a moment with me right now and imagine if you felt that way when you woke up in the morning, that just the very act of awakening, you recognized it as a gift. And I've heard a lot of New Thought people and a lot of New Age people like Louise Hay talk about when they wake up, their very first thought is, thank you. Thank you. And I know, you know, when we all have our challenges, it's very easy to be lost in that energy of, oh, I have to get up and I have all these things to do. And, you know, life can feel not like a gift. But I love this. The very act of awakening is recognized as a gift. At the threshold of a new day, there is no arrogance, rather a longing to praise. God is pictured in sensuous detail as the divine Anamkara. At every moment and in every situation, God is the intimate, attentive, and encouraging friend. Anyway, you can see how how rich this beautiful book is. I love it because it speaks to my heart so much and my relationship with the divine has changed and evolved over the years as I'm sure yours has as well. Um, I love this idea of friendship. And honestly, when I talk with Mother Mary, uh, even though I call her mother, divine mother, I'm really connecting with her as my friend. I'm really connecting with her as that Anamkara as the one to whom I can share everything. And I strongly encourage you to have a relationship with the divine that feels like that. Not everybody is wired that way. Some people are a little bit more intellectual, a little bit more abstract about the divine. But if you're like me and you're very devotionally oriented, if you're highly sensitive, we often have that capacity to feel very, very deeply. And it's so satisfying to know the, the all that is, the omnipresent one, is actually your friend. Such a beautiful, beautiful way of looking at things. Now, this beautiful author, John O'Donohue, talks about a lot of the different aspects of life, and he puts it into um, the understanding of Celtic spirituality. And I think this is, um, let me just look really quick. I think this is... Um, chapter number five, and it's at the very end. He's talking about aging and how to be with aging. Now, all of us are passing through time. And so, you know, the way I like to say it, rather than saying um, at my age or doing anything that references, I like to say, the longer I'm on the planet, (laughs) the longer I'm on the planet, the more I realize, you know, whatever it might be. And so this is a beautiful prayer and a beautiful blessing. It's on page 198. And it's called a blessing for old age. But really, I think this is a blessing for all of us. If you wake up in the morning, and you're still on the planet, this is a blessing for you. A blessing for old age. May the light of your soul mind you. May all of your worry and anxiousness about becoming old be transfigured. May you be given a wisdom with the eye of your soul to see this beautiful time of harvesting. May you have the commitment to harvest your life, to heal what has hurt you, to allow to allow it to come closer to you and become one with you. May you have great dignity. May you have a sense of how free you are And above all, may you be given the wonderful gift of meeting the eternal light and the beauty that is within you. May you be blessed and may you find a wonderful love in yourself for yourself. So I am going to leave that there, my friend. What a beautiful book. I hope that you have gotten a sense about 
this delicious book. It's so yummy. It's so filled with rich, beautiful sweetness and sacredness and blessings and poetry. It is something that can nourish you on a deep level. Again, whether or not you're connected to uh, the Celtic tradition or not, such a beautiful book. It's come to me um, from several different people at different times, and I have several copies of it, and I just love it. I give it to people whenever I can, and I think it's a beautiful, beautiful book to give to yourself. So I'll definitely put the link in our show notes. And I just want to say to you, my friend, you know, I start the start every podcast and I say to you, hello, my miraculous friend. And really what I'm saying is, hello to you, my soul friend. Hello to you, my Anamkara. I imagine you here with me, talking with me as we're drinking our tea and getting closer and being the soul friends that we are. I wish the blessings of this book for you in your life and that you may connect with the Anamkara, the deep soul friend that is within you, as well as experiencing soul friends outside of you as well. It's one of the reasons that we started the Magnify Your Miracles membership. And if that's something that you would love to be a part of, we would love to have you join us. Um, you know, just email me and I'll send you the information and you can have many, many friends that are soul friends on the path. We would love to have you. All right, my friend. Well, thank you so much for listening and for sharing in this beautiful time and this beautiful book together. I'm always going to be reminding you that the key to magnifying your miracles is to remember that your miracle is already here. God bless you, my friend, my miraculous friend, my Anamkara. God bless you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Magnify Your Miracles podcast. I'm so grateful to be able to spend this time with you. If you want even more inspiration, feel free to visit my website, francisfaden.com or magnifyyourmiracles.com. And if you did enjoy this episode, I would really appreciate it if you left a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever it is that you connect with awesome podcasts. Remember, the key to magnifying your miracles is remembering that your miracle is already here.